Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we'll be counting down our picks for the 10 things only wealthy people do and think it's normal. Rolls-Royce has achieved a record profit last year and sold more cars than ever before in its 100-year history, all in the midst of the economic crisis. It seems the luxury industry knows no crisis. For this list, we'll be looking at any kind of activity that's reserved for or almost exclusively done by rich people. Did we miss any obviously wealthy endeavors? Let us know in the comments below. Number 10. Buying new clothes every season Unless you're able to dish out the money every time the weather changes, you're likely stuck with the same clothes for years. They do it over there. Most people aren't able to keep up with the ever-changing fashion trends, opting instead for the occasional thrifting session or a trip to the mall hoping for a big sale. On the other hand, a rich person could easily make sure that they always have a new summer wardrobe. If you didn't wake up this morning with a Versace eye mask and silk pajamas, you're likely a grounded individual with a realistic budget. Find yourself watching a fashion show and thinking you'll be wearing that this spring? I'm sure you'll be a smash at the ball, and I just know you'll have a lovely new outfit. If you said yes, you're much different than the typical working American. Number 9. Getting a car when you turn 16 Getting a car for your birthday is the dream of your standard teenager. A concept made even more popular by the show My Super Sweet 16, a car isn't a typical gift for novice drivers. Oh my goodness, that's so cool. Happy birthday! Oh, you look so pretty. <laughs> Not having to buy your own vehicle prompts a variety of entitled young people, many of whom come from well-off families that demand super expensive rides. At 16, receiving a Tesla wouldn't be the normal present for anyone outside of a fantasy car commercial. Most high school students would be lucky to drive something with a working engine, let alone their dream car. Considering the cost of the average car, even a used one would likely make a substantial dent in any family's wallet. Acura? I wanted a Ferrari! We did the best we could. There was a problem. Acuras are really nice. It's not the car I wanted! The whole party's ruined! Number eight, summer camps and extracurriculars. Did you go to summer camp when you were younger? At this point, the typical sleepaway camp will run you thousands of dollars per child. And we're all here to learn, to grow, and to just plain have because that's what being privileged is all about! Depending on the state, you can send someone to the equivalent of Club Med if the price is right. Outside of the parent trap, it's not always a viable option for families to let their children do that. Okay, down my double. Now the question is, how do I get it out? Even if you're not able to purchase the most expensive package, there's a number of pricey and or fancy extracurriculars, clubs, and sports to last until August. With so many money-draining options these days, it seems that wealthy families continue to normalize their kids' overproductive summers. Hey, Andy, can I take out the motorboat and drive around the lake? Sure. Wow, dang. Hey, just make sure you fill it up with gas when you're done and watch out. <laughs> now, what up? Number seven. Eating in restaurants all the time. Eating out is a luxury that most people can't afford to do every week. I appreciate your understanding. Don't think twice. It's understanding that makes it possible for people like us to tolerate a person like yourself. <laughs> Thank you. Don't mention it. The pricier the restaurant, the less it's possible for the usual household. For your ordinary family, there are establishments that only exist for special events like birthdays or anniversaries. After a while, full-service meals add up when factoring in higher-priced entrees and tips. Come on, throw in a buck. Uh-uh, I don't tip. You don't tip? No, I don't believe in it. For larger wallets, a weekly or even daily trip to an eatery wouldn't do any damage. The sky's the limit for rich people who want any kind of food, leaving room for them to order dessert and leave an astronomical tip. 
While the upper class might have a daily lunch meeting and lavish dinners, everyone else saves up to make restaurant trips more of a special treat. And the French Laundry is a place diners dream about for years before eating here. Number six, art and antique collecting. Arguably the most stereotypical rich person behavior revolves around buying and selling fine art. 52 million is bid, 55 million. 55 million, 58 million. 58 million is bid, 60 million. On my right, it's 60 million. It's rare to see any legitimate painting or sculpture in the hands of anyone but the super elite. As concerns about money laundering overshadow the market, the majority of art pieces will be sold back and forth for millions. Young lady, I'll take it. Congratulations, Homer. You're now a professional artist. Woohoo! Look, Marge, my first sale. In your face, Jasper John. As price tags for Banksy to Basquiat increase, it's nearly impossible for anyone other than the most privileged members of society to acquire them. Of course, the irony of this being that several artists were poor themselves and made little to no money in their actual lifetimes. Without a museum trip or a mansion invite, the general public aren't able to see these priceless works, let alone purchase them. Today, the Metropolitan Museum of Art is one of the world's most renowned museums. It houses collections that span some 5,000 years of world culture, and it welcomes over 7 million visitors per year. Number five, exotic hobbies. With money to spare comes increasingly expensive hobbies. Yachting and sailing take going to the beach to the next level, especially if you own a vessel for yourself. Ever been on one of these before? A boat? Well, learned how to sail when I was six. Oh shit, is that right? Really? I mean, I'm one like this though. I mean, I had the whole front extended in order to fit the chopper up there. For land dwellers, there's always an exclusive country club membership with golf and swimming. By contrast, the rest of the population would settle for a public course or pool. Well, Come on, I'm in. I didn't Joey, ask you. Get out Joey, of here. Would... Hey, thanks a lot. Gamble away all that leftover cash playing high stakes poker or betting on horses, particularly if your own steed is in the running. Speaking of horses, training even just one stallion would be an incredible financial undertaking. Half a million dollars? He was sired by Seattle Slough, and his mother won the Kentucky Derby. Wow. His likeness graces a stamp in Tanzania. I'll take it. Mr. Simpson, do you have half a million dollars? Uh, sure. Take any of those hobbies at its most basic level, and you could have years of saving to account for, with most of them out of reach to the general populace. Number four, big charitable donations. While many people make it a point to give some money to charity, the wealthiest among us write massive checks without a second thought. I'm really here to see it. It's one thing to read statistics, but I want to see it firsthand and, and find out all that can be done. And where we start first. All it takes is a hefty bank account and a worthy cause. While there are some self-aggrandizing reasons to donate, these financial gifts do manage to help out a number of nonprofits that help people in need. And I didn't want to see them fall victim to the system. So I made them a promise. I told them that if they graduated from high school, I would pay for their college education. I've made some empty promises in my life, but hands down, that was the most generous. If they're really wealthy, they have their own foundation that organizes its own charitable funds. At the end of the day, many people try to help out, but could never compete with someone who spends an average person's salary on charity. Around the world, women spend 200 million hours a day collecting water. Oh, what if we could give them that time back? Number three, personal trainers, dietitians, and therapists. Do you want to look like Dwayne The Rock Johnson? Mama, dad was the creature maker. Never need the shaker, the beef from tape, the teacher. Okay, maybe that's impossible, but if you're rich, you can definitely afford to try. With a personal trainer and dietitian, the world is your oyster as you eat copious amounts of rare and vital ingredients. On top of that, a therapist and a doctor will keep your mental and physical life in check with their top medical care. You want to build something that's going to last, you got to do it the right way. You got to build with all the right material. You want to build something quick, fast, over time it's going to break down. Keeping a close watch on your every move and calorie choice, a wealthy person can maintain their best self as long as they're able to pay up. In the real world, an average person might sneak out one of these health benefits. Springfield is in terrible shape, particularly our young boys. Yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> Number two, world travel. Most people are lucky to go on one vacation every few years, if not once in their whole life. For the upper class, a trip around the globe isn't a big deal. And after soaking up more than our share of sun, we'll see how this glittering stretch of France's Mediterranean coast offers more than just a first-class beach break. Not only that, several globe-trotting adventures a year wouldn't be a problem for society's elite. Journeying into the exotic corners of the earth without a care in the world, rich travelers make a trip to Disney feel like a value meal. Factor in first-class plane tickets or a private airfare, and the price instantly exceeds a standard vacation. Coach passengers are not allowed up here in first class. It's policy. I'm sorry. Oh. Once they land, they might even find themselves at exclusive islands, resorts, or high-end hotels, only to be waited on hand and foot. When all is said and done, the round-trip costs would more often than not put any normal person in the red. Here's your plane ticket. What are you talking about? Sue Ellen sends me an invitation. One week before her wedding in India, I'll show her. By flying halfway around the world? Spite never sleep. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, owning a second or vacation home. Often considered the most important venture of people's lives, homeowning is enough of a hassle with one property. All right, we're at the one. This is the biggest and most expensive home in America. You might have seen another video of it, but not like this. In terms of added costs, a second home represents an unprecedented amount of money that few can afford. Usually in a vacation spot, another dwelling brings the opportunity to expand upon the first house's inadequacies. This beautiful home is a rustic escape tucked into the northwest Montana mountain. Customizations such as a private pool or a tennis court make one home cool, but nothing quite compares to having a whole other residence. What most people would call an episode of MTV Cribs becomes a normal everyday thing for affluent society types. What's the matter with you, man? MTV Cribs is here. I don't want to do cribs unless I can do the whole thing. More than any other luxury purchase, a second home is the calling card that someone does especially well for themselves. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.